pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So before we get started, um, for the viewership at home and those of you that are here, obviously this is not the boardroom. And we had what I have heard is a microburst go through the area. But we do have a director of the fire department in Brighton with us tonight, Ted Aresti. So Ted, if you want to just give a brief report on what you've heard happen this afternoon. Sure, happy to. Um, what I can confirm is that there's been dozens of calls involving trees down, wires down, um, some involving structures, and um, there's a significant power outages in the area. Um, RG&E is working to restore the power. Um, there's estimates of anywhere from 7 to 8 or 9 o'clock tonight that most of the power will be restored. Um, so that was the uh, main rationale for having to move um, our meeting tonight. Thanks, Ted. May I have an approval of the agenda, please? So moved. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the minutes from June 7th, please? So moved. Any edits to those, those minutes? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Board of Education reports. We are winding down, um, as we all know, with Monroe County School Boards Association meetings. Um, Val, I don't know if you have anything to report out from our last meeting. Um, I'll just, I can just take it. You might have to turn quick that on. Just have to. Um, there you go. Yeah. Is it on? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Just bring it with you. Okay. Um, so we met with um, the new regent, Ruth Turner, and also Wade Norwood uh, maybe about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. And we talked about the same things we've been talking about with our legislators regarding getting back to school and some of the questions we had about um, remaining about remote learning, the possibility of remote learning for next year for our students. Um, and they really just reiterated it's really important that we continue to contact our legislators um, versus the governor, but they said the governor as well. But they really just reiterate how important it is that to work with the legislators. And they are also trying to work with the legislators at all as well. Um, uh, regarding uh, remote learning for next year, they have not made any decisions yet. And they, don't, they also have told us they are not the party that will make the decision. Uh, they ultimately would like to see students in school five days a week. Uh, but they do recognize that students are going to be coming out of the pandemic uh, it, in different ways um, and in different times, I guess, and particularly for those students who have not been in a building for over a year. Uh, so they're going to, they're asking us to keep that in mind. They did ask us to follow up with, with, again, with our legislators and with the governor, the kind of, um, the, I guess, the hardships that the school districts might experience if we have, and students might experience as well, if we have to continue in remote. Um, it's important to let them know that uh, as well. Okay. And oh, also Ruth Turner gave a she introduced herself. She's our new regent. Um, she is very experienced with education. She also has st students in school right now as well, in high school, to, to middle school, high school, middle and college. School, yeah. um, and um, she is very, very well versed in mental health supports. She has devoted a lot of her time to that. So I think she'll be a very good person to have um, on the Board of Regents. Thanks, Val. We do have some dates to remember. Uh, the 13th of July, we have a summer workshop from 8 until 3 at Mon Menden Golf Club. And that same evening, we will have our regularly scheduled reorganization and meeting, board meeting. And the 14th, our summer workshop continues from 8 until 12 p.m. And may I have a motion to approve the superintendent's contract, please? Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Financial report, Darren. Thank you, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, do you know, Darren, for the sake of the streaming, why don't we go on? Okay. Thank you. Treasury report for May. Uh, we received Monroe County sales tax, uh, about $4,500 more than this time last year. 
so we're, we're trending on target and last year it was doing much better than the year before um, we build two hundred sixty thousand dollars to other school districts for health and welfare services that we provide to students from their districts that attend private schools within our borders uh, everybody is paid at this point to the platoon of two hundred thirteen thousand dollars Rochester City School uh, has not at this point in time school lunch program same thing we've been talking about due to the lost participation due to not as many kids being in school um, we have a forty two thousand dollar loss for the month uh, so far this year we've transferred five hundred fifty thousand dollars so it's far below what we asked authorization for the board so hopefully we will not be uh, bringing all of that over so that's the highlights for the treasurer's report okay may I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report please Second. any questions all in favor opposed motion carried Internal Auditor Risk Assessment Report, which the Audit Oversight Committee uh, did see this report. There's a little bit of confusion. When we switched, changed firms, uh, we're used to more of a report type format, and this looks more like a PowerPoint, uh, but uh, Tim Hungerford, this is how he does his reports, so that's why there's a, a delay in bringing it forward to you. Mm -hmm. He basically goes through and assigns a, a amount of risk to various areas of the, of the district. Nothing was beyond moderate risk. Um, and it's usually due to complexity or the number of transactions that were there, but uh, no material findings were found. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you. Any questions? In terms of the format, do we have an option of asking them to revisit their presentation? Yes, I've asked that for that, yeah. Okay. What, did you get the sense that you had to search for or ask for information? that was readily available or, you know, this time through that um, mm -hmm. had been readily available in past reports? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Was there, something, was there anything in this particular report that the, the committee or yourself needed to search for or ask about that? No, it was just, just a different format other than what we've experienced in the past. In some respects, this gave more detail, okay. but we're, we're used to more of a narrative that explains it a little more. Right. Uh, so I, we had that conversation, and he will do that in the next report. Yeah, I found it a lot easier to go through. Yeah, you know. it's easier to go through quickly. Yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have um, transportation contracts for Monroe One BOCES for next school year uh, for students with special needs for their programs to the tune of uh, 97,567. Um, even though it's BOCES, we still have to get uh, approve the contracts and submit them for approval to SED for aid purposes. We have a motion, please. Second. Question. I just had a quick question, Darren. I know it's hard to assess, but do you have a rough figure of how many students that trans transportation contract covers? I do, but I don't have it. I don't know it off the top of my head right now. I have, is Elizabeth might have it. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next is uh, transportation contracts for extended school year. Um, all of the contractors that provided transportation during the current school year have agreed to extend into the extended school year, which is part of what we had in the bid uh, specifications. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next is the food service, food service budget. Excuse me. Um, we try to put together a budget, but obviously it's based on what the actual activity is for the year, and it's very difficult to project based on what the current year and half of last year was. Um, but we put together a budget based on the previous five years. Uh, eight years ago, we opted out of the federal and state program, and prior to the pandemic, we were breaking even or actually doing a little better with the program. Um, some changes for the 21-22 year that are going to uh, increase costs. As we all know, food costs have gone up substantially. Um, a couple of bids that we opened, for example, one of them was $24,000 more than it was for the same item last year. Uh, we also are projecting about $30,000 more because we're transitioning away from styrofoam to paper um, containers and such, provided we can get them right now. They're very difficult in supply. So the budget is a slight increase 
um, 2.2 percent, um, and the average for the last five years has been under 1 percent. Uh, we are requesting for the first time in three years a 25 cent increase in the school lunch price so that we can maintain the program. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Lastly, uh, some year end business. Uh, typically, what we have to do each year, um, we, I call it the up to amounts. Uh, so that the board, once the, the uh, year is closed out and the audit is complete, books are closed, you can transfer uh, surplus funds from the year into various reserve funds. But in order to do that at this time, prior to the end of the year, uh, we have to do what we call up to amounts. So that's basically what this is. At this point in time, we're, we're uh, anticipating about 98% of our expenditure side of the budget will be expended. Uh, and just slightly over 100% of the revenues received. So we're, we're right, right around 3% or slightly less that we're projecting that we'll have. So you have the listing here of all of the reserves that we have uh, and the up to amounts that we could put into that. Uh, probably in August timeframe, um, you will receive the actual amounts based on the auditor recommendations. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Human resource report, Sean. I think I'm on. Can you hear me okay? All right. Good evening. Uh, first, we have for your consideration is the professional staff report. We have a number of items here. We have five appointments for certificated staff. Uh, we have a change in status from regular substitute to probationary. SRP appointment, a school nurse at Allendale Columbia, one, let's see here, a couple of resignations for SRPs, and then we also have a resignation that I'd like to highlight for Greta Johnston, who's been with us for 15 years. We wish her well as she embarks on her administrative uh, start with Monroe One BOCES. We also have our normal process for terminations for our psych interns, um, and we also have our positions that are ending for our regular subs that we hired due to COVID, and we thank them for their, their help and support. Um, so those items are listed for your consideration. I have a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions? Sean, just a clarification. So the psych interns, we will be rehiring. Yes, yes, those are those are yearly positions. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, next we have for your consideration is the support staff report. We have one correction of salary for you to note. We have a resignation for a bus driver, uh, summer helper appointments, cleaner resignation. Um, there's one that I'd like to uh, announced for retirement, Josh Apo at Park Road Middle School with 25 years of service. His will be effective in November, and then several appointments and several resignations from food services. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Questions, comments? I just want to congratulate Josh and thank him for really looking out for the well-being, the environmental well-being of our students for 25 years is just outstanding, so amazing. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks, Sean. Special Education Report, Elizabeth. All items on consent agenda. Thank you. Superintendent's Report, Mike. Thank you. There is not a need for an executive session this evening. Uh, I also would like to acknowledge Josh's retirement. I, I worked with Josh as a teacher, assistant principal, principal um, in my current capacity, and uh, he is an educator. If I were to give him a title to his position, it's, it's an educator in every way, shape, or form. Uh, he's modeled resilience. Uh, he's modeled perseverance with his life story. He's modeled humanity. Um, he's modeled um, the importance of loving your neighbor. 
uh, and he'll be um, missed incredibly in our district. So wishing Josh the best of luck in his retirement. A few other things. Um, this is our last board meeting of the year uh, before we kick off the, the, new, the new year. And I do want to give some thank yous uh, and call out some specific groups uh, for the many positive acts of kindness uh, that we've seen this year. And, and more than acts of kindness, too, it's been acts of additional additional work that people have put in. Uh, and that work started last summer. Uh, so I'd like to thank the 80-plus um, community staff and Board of Education members that gave up two summer days to be very creative, seems like forever ago, um, to get us five days a week with our elementary students, K-5. Uh, the thinking that went on there and the commitment from everyone in the building to do what's best for, for our kids and families was, was incredible. Uh, I'd also like to thank our paraprofessionals uh, who are serving as pod partners at the elementary level. Uh, without our paraprofessionals shifting um, positions and taking on different roles, uh, we would not have been able to open K-5 um, five days a week, and, and they've been remarkable. So hats off to our paraprofessionals. Our Pittsburgh School Foundation, uh, using their time to focus on helping um, and, and spreading kindness by um, most recently the positive postcards uh, where we had 2,100 positive postcards delivered to staff. And uh, thank you to the Pittsburgh Federal Credit Union who actually paid for the postcards. Um, also a thank you to the credit union for all their extra donations to our student opportunity fund. Uh, we've needed to use um, a lot, uh, if not all of it, uh, for our students in need of, of different things. I'd like to thank our community uh, for uh, raising approximately $60,000, uh, providing gift cards for hundreds of families over several months who needed uh, support with meals. Uh, again, that seemed like forever ago, but um, at the start of the pandemic when people were losing jobs, um, they were being laid off or furloughed, um, and uh, every dollar of that 60000 was hand-delivered primarily, sometimes mailed, uh, to families that were in need, and um, that's what our community is about. And hats off to our community for, for stepping up and having such great hearts. Uh, continuing the theme with our families, thank you for driving. Um, thank you for um, your patience and long lines, especially at the beginning with drop off and pick up. To our students uh, who we know struggled a lot during the course of the year, uh, but spending so many hours in volunteering um, outside of school and making the lives of others better. Um, we have lots of examples of how our students spread kindness to others um, with inside the schools and outside the schools. To our coaches uh, and our extracurricular advisors for keeping students connected to a passion. Uh, it, it was not easy. Um, it was cumbersome. Um, it was, um, uh, there, there was a lot of red tape, um, but we did it. And our students got to experience, for the most part, a lot of what they like to do after school. To our athletic director for maximizing participation. Uh, I do not believe we cut any students at the modified level because we knew uh, that students needed um, that connection more than ever. And so our coaches and our athletic director um, really worked at um, basically doubling in some sports the amount of students that participated. Uh, I'd like to thank the many staff and parents that served on additional committees, uh, especially additional committees um, that involved a lot of work um, from everything from scenario planning and trying to interpret guidance and forecasting different scenarios to our special events. Uh, and those committees literally led to a flawless execution um, to our senior parade, uh, to our senior ball and prom, to our back to our future days, uh, to graduation, um, and soon uh, a culmination of year-end events uh, at other grade levels. Our technology department, and I wrote this before even today, for continuously evolving <laughs> with the changes <laughs> in board meeting setups. Uh, so um, thank you. Our chief information officer for all the rapid test reporting, creation of morning screenings, surveys, daily health reporting mandate, and, and so much more. So thank you, uh, Jeff, and to your group. To our nurses um, who have never worked harder uh, navigating changes in guidance. Uh, 
stepping up to volunteer for rapid testing for our students and, and, and others, all the additional reporting and putting themselves in harm's way, um, thank you to our nurses. Uh, Jen Marin and Elizabeth Carpenter, uh, along with Melanie Ward, uh, for overseeing remote learning programs and providing guidance uh, for different learning models. Um, and that has evolved um, significantly uh, over the last year and a half. Our assistant superintendent um, and director for business for their work with a complicated budget and a, a lot of moving pieces. Uh, their work with transportation, food service, and maintenance. Our assistant superintendent for human resources working through a complicated process for staffing next year as we shift from multiple learning models uh, to back to all one person. Director of communications for ongoing communication, including weekly updates to our families and staff, our teacher leaders and our building leaders for working collaboratively to tackle complicated COVID-related scenarios and protocols and everything else. Uh, our PTSA um, and PTSA leadership for continuously finding ways to support students, staff, and community, especially during a time when we were so fatigued. And our Board of Education for so many hours of volunteering uh, while thoughtfully processing controversial topics. Special thank you to our board members for your advocacy to have schools fully reopened for the fall um, and for hanging in there for two graduations in what felt like a hundred and something degree weather um, at Sutherland and Menden. Uh, to our health and safety committee members, our bus drivers, um, our director of student services, uh, Dr. Van Brogan, who's retiring, and this is her last board meeting. Uh, Pat, during this last year, you served as our COVID leader, working with multiple committees, the nurses, psychologists, all to tend to the health and safety protocols and procedures, while at the same time supporting staff, students, and families with social, emotional, and mental health needs. You were an instrumental part of helping us weather this health crisis, and for this and so much more, we thank you. We thank you and wish you the best of luck in your quasi-retirement. Uh, <laughs> We look forward to having you back in the consultant role and uh, greatly appreciate who you are as a person and all you've done for our district. And this is also Val and Irene's last board meeting. I uh, really want to commend both of you um, for being deeply committed in so many ways, for serving on so many committees. Uh, throughout your time on the Board of Education, you've been highly ethical uh, in carrying out your duties and making vital um, decisions that were best for students staff in our community. I wish all of you and everyone that can see me out there could honestly see the amount of work uh, both Val and Irene um, put in on a weekly basis in a volunteer role uh, to be best informed in order to model best practices for our district. I will miss you both on a personal level and a professional level. You're truly amazing human beings. So thank you. And I'm winding down here. Uh, just want to, to um, clarify what's happening next year with learning models. Uh, we're, we're in a little bit of a conundrum because um, we need to know from the state what our expectation is going to be relative to remote learning. But the state is not giving us any direction. Um, so I sent out the message that said we are excited uh, to be planning for a fully in-person return school in September. We have not received guidance um, from New York State Department of Health or New York State Education Department. Absent of this guidance, we are not planning to offer a 100% all virtual learning model. We do understand that some families may be hesitant to return their children to in-school uh, due to unique health-related extenuating circumstances. And we're asking parents that if they feel that um, there's significant reasons why their child cannot come back to let their building principal know. Just so we can get a sense in the event that the governor or the commissioner says you have to offer remote learning for extenuating circumstances, that we can be planful of that. And then we can't explain what the program is going to look like uh, because the program would certainly be based on what the criteria are and what the, um, the, the numbers are. So uh, this could range from anywhere where um, we utilize our BOCES service to work with our remote learners 
Uh, if it's a real small number, um, then it could be us using our own staff uh, to work with students and, and remote. Uh, but our bottom line right now is we, we need to have a ballpark figure of the amount of students that, that we're dealing with. And last, um, uh, just to share that board members and superintendents um, have been aligned in their advocacy regarding a full return to school this fall. I want to thank our board president, who is also the Monroe County School Board President, for spearheading our advocacy endorsements on a county level. Uh, and a quick highlight for the things that we've been advocating for is a full in-person reopening of our schools for all students as soon as possible allowing local decisions about remote learning criterion, uh, program participation requirements, uh, and allowing us to create a state-run regional remote learning program if needed, uh, hence uh, BOCES, for example. Eliminate social distance requirements in, in schools, eliminate outdoor masking, revise indoor masking so they're based on our local data and they're aligned with CDC guidance, uh, not requiring testing, anymore unless infection rates rise and it becomes necessary to keep a school open. We also are advocating for um, protocols and procedures like cleaning, um, capacity requirements, micro um, metric infection rates by school, eliminate daily health screening processes and requirements. Uh, the work was um, significant and I uh, want to thank Amy for her role as both our board president and Monroe County School Board President as well as our um, superintendents across the county and encourage people again to go on our website um, to download um, our advocacy letter, copy it, paste it, sign your name and, and send it off. Uh, we are awaiting confirmation uh, for uh, meetings uh, to sit down and work with both the assembly and the Senate relative to our advocacy uh, for opening schools fully in September and that is through the um, Albany um, uh, Education Committee and that's all I have thank you thanks Mike okay may I have an approval of the consent agenda please Second. all in favor opposed motion carried old business anyone New business? I do have some new business. Um, as Mike had mentioned, we do have some departures at the table tonight, and um, it's very bittersweet for us sitting here. Um, I first want to acknowledge Pat Von Brogan. On behalf of the board, Pat, our gratitude for your dedication to the Pittsburgh Central School District. I vividly recall. Um, when I was doing my onboarding and meeting with Judy Leesman, and who is Pat's predecessor, um, and thinking to myself coming out of that meeting, she was describing her job description and everything that that encapsulated. And I'm thinking, I can't even fathom the enormity and complexity of the position. And in my mind, the only thing I kept thinking of, well, she's basically the umbrella that protects everything that's student-centered. And so for that, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. Shana has big shoes to fill, but I can't thank you enough for serving and protecting all of our students. You've done a phenomenal job and we will miss you. And to my fellow board colleagues, I'm sorry, I have to take some time to acknowledge you. Um, you're both exceptional. Um, and giving thought on how to best pay tribute to Irene and Valerie, I referred back to a Monroe County School Boards Association prospective board candidate presentation that's offered to people that are contemplating running for the Board of um, Education. And there are nine basic tenets of board service that all board members should reflect on um, while serving our school community. And as veterans on the Board of Education, we remind ourselves of these tenets annually. So I just wanted to refresh our memories. I think it's a good habitual thing to do. But 
Um, first one is, have I been an apprentice? Regardless of my experience or tenure on the board, have I been an active listener, observer, and have I asked questions? Have I represented all constituent groups in my tenure? How have I handled the pressure received from various constituencies when confronted with contentious decisions? Have I committed to wearing a board hat at all times? Have I placed the student foremost in my mind when making decisions? Have my personal biases ever interfered with decision making? Have I worked collaboratively with my board team and superintendent? Have I respected and maintained confidentiality throughout my tenure? And how thick is my skin? And do I still have a sense of humor? <laughs> well, we at the table can attest that both of you have impenetra <laughs> impenetrable skin, <laughs> serving as stewards of our district mission during critical moments in public education. Above all, you remain steady and recognize the importance of laughter and light despite any obstacle we faced. Irene and Valerie most certainly have fulfilled and exceeded their board service duties throughout their tenure. So much has certainly changed in education in 12 years that Irene has served and six years of Valerie's service. So I thought I would share some fun facts to share about Irene and Val's tenure as well as personal comments that your fellow colleagues shared about you. So starting with Irene, 2009, I really had to go back. And the headlines in 2009, foundation aid freeze, right there? That's, that's a pretty safe bet. Okay. <laughs> Beginning of gap elimination adjustment, Darren. Um, breakout, this is interesting, breakout of the H1N1 swine flu. Potential threat of a global pandemic. How we view that as the irony of your final year. You have attended roughly 252 board meetings, 24 summer workshops, 48 retreats, 120 building visits. All at 7 o'clock in the morning? Correct. <laughs> you also co-chaired information exchange and labor relations for Monroe County School Boards Association. And Irene, you also served on the audit oversight committee for how many years? Too many, okay. Lots. And here are some thoughts to share from your fellow board colleagues. They describe you as analytical, dedicated. Irene asked the tough questions and wasn't afraid to speak her mind, which was greatly appreciated. I met Irene at a PTSA meeting. Her speech addressed her service and commitment to the organization. Throughout my years volunteering in PTSA, Irene's annual presence and encourage, encouragement was a constant. I'll miss her thoughtful questions and ability to parse a problem. The wisdom that she brought to the table is another quality that I appreciated about Irene. Irene is student-centered, thoughtful, focused, reflective, inquisitive, detailed, helpful, and kind. Valerie, 2015 headlines. Mary Ellen Aaliyah was the first woman to be appointed as the commissioner of the New York State Education Department. Momentum gaining for implementing restorative practices. Social emotional learning best practices were more common. And the ESSA signed, was signed into law. You've attended 126 board meetings, 12 summer workshops, 24 retreats, 60 building visits, you have been the Legislative and Information Exchange Co-Chair for Monroe County School Boards Association. You have been an ardent, steadfast legislative liaison for us at the table. It's such an empty seat. Um, who can forget your infamous trip to Albany when the bus got <laughs> stuck underneath the bridge? I'm sure you'll forever remember that. Thoughts from your fellow board colleagues? You were a great legislative representative that always had the pulse on current events, student-centered to the core, invested, and a bridge builder. Val was assigned as my mentor and met with me frequently, patiently entertaining my questions. I admire the professionalism she exhibited as a board member, 
Her leadership of and reports from the Legislative Committee were well received by the community. Vale also extended the hand of friendship to me during my onboarding. Vale is family-centered, altruistic, an activist, optimist, thorough, determined, good-natured, and she has a great sense of humor. Finishing board service this year serves as a testimonial of your steadfast belief in public education by serving our students, staff, and families during what's certain to be the most pivotal and historic time in education. Our board applauds your persistence and commitment demonstrated throughout this year in particular. You've continued to serve with integrity, patience, and understanding. Amidst a year of uncertainty, you consistently rose to the challenge of remaining student-centered and true to the reasons we serve as elected officials. We'd also like to recognize and thank your families this evening. The amount of time you've spent away from your loved ones to serve our district is greatly appreciated. Missed family events, activities, dinners, visiting children and relatives out of state, being with grandbabies, planning weddings, the list is endless. We cannot thank you and your families for allowing you to serve the Pittsburgh community in such an impactful way. You'll be dearly missed at the board table, but we wish you much health, happiness, many blessings, and of course, much laughter as you enter this new chapter in your lives. So tonight, because we moved our venue, we have gifts for you that we will be extending to you. And I just want to share with the audience, we bought clocks for each one of them, which is an odd gift going into retirement. But you don't have to keep track of time like you did being on the board. <laughs> so with a small token of our gratitude, the board is going to give you an engraved clock. And it represents, after years of selfless dedication, it's time to spend time with your families, near and far. Precious time with your grandchildren. Time to plan weddings. Time to focus on what lies ahead for both of you. In the words of Fred Rogers, often when you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. After this monumental last year of board service, we all agree you're both so deserving of time to enjoy life. Congratulations. Any other new business? Well, I think we might want to say a few words. Okay. We might want to say a few words. Go for it. Should I just yell or? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to yell. Um, thank you, Amy. Uh, I actually don't write some notes down because I didn't want to forget anybody, and my list is not nearly as long as Mike's, although it probably should be. <laughs> so what Mike said first of all. So thank you to all of those people as well. Um, but I'm very grateful that I had this opportunity to, to work with you and with Mike and with his entire board. Um, you are all so passionate, passionate in your commitment to public education and are genuinely invested in the well-being of the entire school community. Your support and ability to remain positive, especially during this past year, are truly contagious, but in a good way. Not <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know and getting to know and work with so many talented and exceptional administrators, <clears throat> teachers, um, staff members, and parents. You, you all impress me every single day with your dedication and enthusiasm. And this year as well, but I will certainly miss seeing you at our morning breakfasts, our summer workshops, and all the many, many events that we attend through the school district. So I, I will definitely miss that. Um, and I'm especially thankful to the students. Um, they have taught me so much throughout uh, these these past six years um, from kindergartners teaching me how to code with Moana with some help from our um, Sutherland or Menden High School students to um, Sutherland High School AP Chem students teaching me how to um, Recreate the sticky stuff that goes on the pads of geckos so they can stick them on the wall. That was really interesting um, 
but visiting visiting classrooms and working with students have always been one of my favorite things as a, as a board member and I'm really happy that you guys will have a chance to be able to do that again next year and to see the great things that our students or staff are doing every single day um, and of course I would also like to, to thank my family for supporting me and being flexible um, the times that I was the first one to leave the house in the morning and there were times that I came home at night and everybody was already in bed and there were a few times that I didn't come home at all because I wasn't all but you so <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that and to Jeff and Sarah um, I hope you enjoy being a school board member as much as I have and I wish the entire board um, the best in the coming school year and beyond well, that's a tough act to follow I also want to thank all of you. It, it's been interesting when I look around this board table and I look at all the people who are not board members but who are employees here, everyone was different when I started on this position. So you all had different, different people were in these seats. So it, it, it's really nice to see faces, new faces, and, and I remember the old faces were great and you are all wonderful and very adept at your positions, and I've learned so much from each one of you. I mean, I was thinking at home today, like what I've learned from each one of you, and I'm not gonna go into every single one of that, <laughs> but I have really learned a lot from all of you. Um, I've learned, I'm just gonna give you a global thing, I've learned how to be a cheerleader, I've learned how to be respectful, I've learned how to be thick-skinned, I've learned how to be thoughtful, and I've, I've truly learned more than I've given. I, you've all given me so much that I'm going to take away and use in my next life, wherever it is. <laughs> um, one of the things I was thinking about is like whenever someone leaves, Amy always says, okay, give me three words about this person. And we'd collect all the words and we'd say with those kind of like a word jumble of about a person. So I actually opened up the email, not the email, the website, and I went through 12 years of board stuff. It was interesting, all the board packets. And I pulled out a couple things. Some of these are more than words. They're maybe sentences, but I'm just going to read some of the things that we've done together. Some may not mean much to you all, but uh, you guys will get it. Turf and lights. <laughs> Bringing back girls gymnastics. APPR. Common Core. Pittsford Pub. <laughs> Pittsford Pride. In the early days, we celebrated 100 recipients for scholarly and athletic success, got nine people in the audience. Pittsford Pride today. Celebrate nine recipients, and we have 100 people in the audience. We're celebrating nine recipients for, nine recipients for good citizenship. Loss of power at Thornell. How appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a going theme, loss of power. 7 a.m. monthly board tours. Mirror finish hardwood floors. I wish Jeff were here. Um, later school times, summer retreats, full day kindergarten, recycling lunch trays, thirsties, gap elimination, underfunded foundation aid. Sound familiar? Determining the next skill set needed for the 21st century. We were doing that well into the 21st century. <laughs> Triborough Amendment, no cell phones allowed, cell phones only in the hallways, cell phones used in the classrooms <laughs> during lessons, <laughs> unfunded mandates, agenda books, best practice, you better be using those agenda books for managing your homework assignments, teacher web pages, no need to use agenda books, the teachers have them on their websites, parade, parent portals, touring underneath the pool, Feeling oh, yeah. the pool leaking. <laughs> pool now a multi-purpose room. <laughs> Superintendent's <laughs> weekly summative voicemail messages. Superintendent's weekly summative email messages. Superintendent's text. <laughs> <laughs> Board of Ed texting parties. <laughs> text. Board of Ed, attend school events only if your child participates. Do not wear your name tag. <laughs> Board of Ed attends as many school events as possible. Always wear your name tag. I'm just all the differences that would come out. Whiteboards, thirsties, whoa, or go slow, whoa. Do you remember what that is? It's a lunch thing. Diversity and inclusion. High school ranking is a must. High school ranking is really not needed. 
My school books, no child left behind. Field trips, my personal favorite field trips. <laughs> New HR director, Board of Ed newsletter, Pete is an editor extraordinaire. He is an amazing editor. Active shooter training, Board of Ed committees, masks, redistricting, the R word, COVID, another new director of HR. Social distancing, dignity for all students, code of conduct, major revision, thank you, Pat. New mission and vision statements, new superintendent, energy dots. Anyone remember energy dots? No? Health and safety, school board associations, New York State, Monroe County, listening to students' voices, listening to parents' voices, listening to the community voices, listening to you. School budget, budget passage, budget failure and revote, 2% cap, water testing for lead, guidance, advocacy work, student assessments, opt out, teacher assessments, unified basketball textbooks, textbooks with CDs in the back, textbooks with online accessibility, no CDs, e textbooks, no hard copies. <laughs> policy for safety, policy for inclusion, new principles. So that's just a few of the things. <laughs>
So I will go in order here. I have Kevin Lockhart. <laughs> I have to go first. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy it. Kevin, this. could you first give us your address, please? Um, I'm from Webster. Do you the have, village of Webster. Do you have your street address for it? It's Kittleberger. Okay. Sorry. Okay. There's a lot of, I've met a lot of weird people this, uh, this summer. Okay. So I was trying to avoid saying that. Can you that. use the microphone so that the folks at home can hear? Oh, your microphone's over there. Don't start the time yet. <laughs> Do you got this great backdrop? You can see it fine. Okay, Kevin. Okay. We're starting the timer. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm here today is to advocate for the full reopening of schools in Monroe County without compulsory state guidelines. The goal is to inspire a call to action across Monroe County and form a united front against the state health department in order to end the state surveillance program in our schools. This is my argument. The rise in infectious disease has caused New York State government become, to become authoritarian. The protests and uprisings this summer, this summer were a reaction to the rise of an authoritarian state as well as the failure for all people to be represented democratically. Today's COVID update. <laughs> I'm proud to announce zero new cases and people under the age of 20 today. That's zero. Uh, that includes the entirety of the Finger Lights in Monroe County region. That's today's numbers. There are 14 new cases for adults, for a grand total of 67,385 cases reported. Our region of the Finger Lakes is surveilling and documenting emergent flu cases and reports them daily, thus continuing the basis for Executive Order 202 from Cuomo declaring a state of disaster emergency in New York. Executive Order 202 declaring that emergency caused the New York State Department of Health to become fundamentally opposed to Pittsburgh Board of Education and the parents in Monroe County by ramming down radical state agendas that harm these kids. This school wants to cut masks and go back to normal, but our state government is supervising every aspect of our lives. Large events are now state sanctioned and supervised, like the RPO, for example, and our social media is constantly monitored for ideological sensitivities. Many of us aren't even allowed on social media. An authoritarian government is defined by highly concentrated structures that repress dissent, emphasize submission to authority, social conformity, and show hostility toward outgroups. The article, Pathogens and Politics, references two multinational studies that shows where there's a prevalence of infectious disease, there's a strong correlation in authoritarian personal beliefs and governing systems. The increase in authoritarianism in Monroe County has not been counter and New York State has not been counterbalanced by legislation that will make Democrat democracy truly representative. The link between New York State Department of Health and the Finger Lakes Monroe County is tethered by half a billion dollars in federal grants. The precondition to receiving surplus funding is that masks will be enforced until the kids are vaxxed. Uh, that's my understanding, and the county will continue to surveil and report emergent cases. Order 202 is being used as the pretext to brute forcing uh, CRT, uh, which we all, I think everybody in their right mind should uh, protest wholeheartedly, vaccinations, masks, and more lockdowns. It's not clear that parents still have a say in Monroe County schools. Uh, the people of Monroe County reject the premise of the governor's state of emergency as well as the continued effort to surveil, test, and vaccinate the American public. Today, the people demand that this Board of Education <laughs> refuse to uphold the terms of Executive Order 202 and to discontinue the federal grants that are invigorating this political crisis and sever their relationship with Monroe County Health Department. I'm willing to concede a little on that one. I'm also asking the Board to support legislation that will outlaw the New York State Department of Health from conducting ex experimental programs in Monroe County schools. Thank you. Someone said, contact your legislators. Kevin, your time's up. Three more seconds. We all need to show out and force to regain our freedom. Go to Take back your boe.onuniverse.com to get connected, find these resources. Thank Don't you. give up, show up. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Did you like that? <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just gonna sit down for the rest of the meeting. I appreciate it. Hi. Next, I have Jane Mallowitz. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? We can. Just state your address for us, please. Jane Malwitz, 3873 Elmwood Avenue. Great. Thank right. you. <clears throat> First, I would like to recognize it's been a very challenging time, and I don't envy your position. However, I feel it's important for you to hear from parents to gain better insight into their concerns. I ask that you please take this as the... Um, constructive criticism or the manner in which it's intended. 
I am following up on my presentation to this board on May 24th regarding the grading policy instituted by you for the 2019-2020 school year. I was going to present to you at the last board meeting, however, I was led to believe our concerns were being addressed. You say you are teaching our children to be critical thinkers and agents of change, but some do not seem to value this trait in the parents. My frustration is not only with our son's grades, but also the district's lack of transparency and what I consider at times to be deceptive tactics. I have listened to many presentations on policies where the board stated the policy was outside their control to change. However, this policy was instituted by this board and you have complete authority to manage. Let me walk you through some of the events to highlight the reason behind my frustration. April 17th, 20, the letter from Pittsburgh School District stating that the policy will harm no students, false. June 2020, I requested to meet with somebody regarding this policy, and I had to insist somebody meet with me in person. There was no follow-up from the school. Informed by Sutherland staff that colleges are relaxing admission requirements and policies, and this would be a non-issue. False. On at least two times, I was told if there were extenuating circumstances, which negative, negatively impacted students in their first and second quarter, plans were made to discuss false and false. I was also told this is being addressed at counselor's office and delayed due to end of year activities, false. I do not believe there was ever any attention in addressing this our issue. I believe that our documents were just wanted. We have inquired into the reasoning behind this policy and have yet to receive any details. There has been no open dialogue, just that's the policy. Why the lack of transparency? Is it because school districts met with attorneys and instituted this policy in the name of equity? How much of taxpayer dollars are being used for attorneys and legal counsel? Parents do have rights. Jane, if you could wrap up, please. Okay, as per 34 CFR Part 99, New York State Ed Laws and your policy 7240, we have requested our son's records be corrected since they are false and inaccurate and misleading. Further, since you have declined to amend our son's records as requested, you are in violation of Chapter 99.20C and have not notified us of our right to our hearing under Chapter 99.21. We have a written request for our hearing, which we will provide following this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Next, we have Damian Vicari. Hello, my name is Damian Vickery, and I also live at 3873 Elmwood Avenue. I'm going to um, yield my time to my wife because she's got the information more at hand for this next topic, which is a separate issue. Thank you. And again, please take this in the manner in which it's meant. It's meant to provide open form so why you can understand maybe why some people are feeling the way they are. Um, this is going over um, the equity policies. Are your policies on equity for all students or just some? Were we discriminated against being, were we discriminated against based on being past homeschoolers or any perceived religious beliefs? In Dr. Wilkins' memo to district superintendents and administrators from the New York Department of Education regarding ESSA on best practices for rigorous coursework, schools should be encouraging all students to participate in advanced coursework. Last year was our son's first year at Pittsford schools. When transferring into Pittsford Sullivan, the counseling department did not encourage him to take any more challenging math sections and when pl was placed in the lowest level geometry, even though he had nearly 100% average in algebra and had high entrance math scores. He self-advocated to move into the honors level math. 
When we discussed with him that he could obtain much higher grades in the lower level, he replied, it's not just the grades, I want to learn as much as I can. In another instance, when he discussed his desire to complete the necessary coursework to obtain the Regents Diploma with advanced designation, he was discouraged and told it's no big deal. It's just the sticker on your diploma. So here you have a child that wants to challenge himself and is being discouraged by your school district. Is this the equity you're talking about? I wonder how many other children this has happened to. I would like to thank this school for the real life teachable moments. My son has experienced, has had an opportunity to experience firsthand socialism and equity in education and he wants nothing to do with it. He found it infuriating and demotivating. Throughout my college life and early working years, I worked with students from disadvantaged high schools and college students through programs such as SEEK, EOP, Upward Bound to help them in their educational opportunities. I believe in true equality in education and is why I support homeschooling and school choice so all parents, regardless of their socioeconomic status, are afforded the opportunity and ability to choose and provide for the best education for their child. This has been my belief for a long time and has nothing to do with current events. I will leave you with my current favorite saying, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. Orwell, 1984. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Jen Channing. Jen. Hi, I'm Jen Canning, 21 Wrights Parkway. My pronouns are she, her. And I have a both a uh, request and a question this evening. I appreciate the opportunity that was provided by the PTSA to hear from Tasha Potter, Monroe One BOCES consultant, about her involvement in our equity work these past few months and her recommendations for the district going forward. She offered some great information on her role and the work she participated in and the work still left to do. My request is to please consider sharing Ms. Potter's presentation and recommendations along with those from Generation Ready and Natalie McGee on the district website so that all parents may follow along on this journey in becoming a more equitable and culturally proficient district. As Ms. Potter mentioned, building that trusting relationship and being partners in education is so important and transparency is a big part of building that trust. These recommendations and the work of our paid consultants not only allows our families to know our strengths and weaknesses, but can also illustrate deliverables received by the district, areas of improvement in that time frame, and what our resources have been spent on over the past two years. Providing access to this information is one way of increasing family engagement, which I understand is one of the areas to be addressed going forward. Though 41 attendees for rescheduled PTSA event days before graduation is impressive, there are many families who are interested in this information and should have access to it. As we work to engage with families who have not been heard or haven't been at the table before, I hope we can continue to look beyond PTSA members and intentionally connect with families uh, and continue to bring the student's voice to the table as well. My question is in regard to the area of ongoing adult learning that was referred to by Ms. Potter through both personal and professional work. I understand there are some new offerings for professional development through the Teacher Center this summer, a day and a half leadership training and a scheduled workshop for teachers and staff on equity work, which is great. So my question is, how is the district working with the PDTA to ensure that more and more teachers take advantage of these learning opportunities so that they feel prepared and supported in the classroom around these equity topics? It is inherently a question of equity for the students if not all teachers receive these trainings and workshops and have access to the teachers who understand the importance of the different topics. I look forward to hearing how all teachers and staff will engage in the ongoing learning process around equity and I would encourage the board to consider public forums available to our families so that we can continue to have a conversation and a dialogue about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. And did you want to yeah, say something? Jen, I, I would um, 
Chair, that I echo a couple of the sentiments you just shared uh, around um, transparency and around engagement. Um, the collaboration we've had with, with Tasha and um, with other groups has been remarkable. We're sad to see another consultant go. Um, but we also have a unique schedule this year uh, where um, we have additional days with staff in the building before school starts. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be utilizing uh, portions of those days to make sure all staff uh, receive uh, professional development before the start of the school year. Thank you. From PDTA. Good evening, Dwayne Sabone, president of the Pittsburgh District Teachers Association, 250 Mystic Lane. Thank you. I want to thank the board for the opportunity to speak this evening to you um, as a kind of a summary of the year and a, and a thank you of sorts. Um, first of all, on behalf of our members, teachers, powers, nurses, uh, mental health providers, librarians uh, across the board, um, we're tired, but we're proud. It's been a, a rather challenging year. The responsiveness that's been required to do the things that we've done has taken um, the support of everybody. With that said, I wanna take a moment to thank the administration, whether it be central office or at our building level, for the incredible support of all of our members through that, and then after and with that, the community. Um, the um, direct response from community members, parents, to our staff through the work that we've done has been overwhelming and tremendous. I would say that what I have seen has been nothing but positivity directly towards our staff, and I want to uh, thank our community for that. I do want to point out for the board that um, the work that you do is incredibly challenging. There are no easy answers when you listen to every voice. The every voice have easy answers. The combination and the listening and pulling all that together is not. So I want to commend you for doing that, for taking that time to listen, to hear, to know, and to be able to engage. So I want to thank you for that aspect. I do want to point out that um, starting last Friday, uh, we did uh, enter into what is known as another PDTA Day of Giving, and we uh, will be bringing those funds into uh, PEF, and we're proud to be able to support that work as we continue moving forward. Uh, the only problem with it is we did not have a great understanding of what a day of giving was, so we extended it through the weekend and into today. Um, so um, we do believe that in the future we're going to have to rename our program. Um, that one is a little bit of a challenge. And I do want to just thank my, uh, the members of PDTA as I have the mic for the fact that the work that they did this year was not solely in school. Every one of them had families of their own that they had to um, take care of, children that they had to figure out their schooling as they came here to provide for others. So I want to just take a moment of my time to thank them for that. And I want to thank the board for all that you have done this year. Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne. Okay. With that, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Thanks, Irene. Vail? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night.